Hello, I'm Father Joe Roche of the Marian Fathers of the Immaculate Conception. Thank you for joining us as we continue with our year-long journey reading the diary of St. Maria Faustina Kowalska from beginning to end. Today we take up from where we left off, beginning with diary entry number 1306. O oh, humility, lovely flower, I see how few souls possess you. Is it because you are so beautiful and at the same time so difficult to attain? Oh yes, it is both the one and the other. Even God takes great pleasure in her. The floodgates of heaven are open to a humble soul, and a sea of graces flows down upon her. Oh, how beautiful is a humble soul! From her heart, as from a censer, rises a varied and most pleasing fragrance, which breaks through the skies and reaches God himself, filling his most sacred heart with joy. God refuses nothing to such a soul. She is all-powerful and influences the destiny of the whole world. God raises such a soul up to his very throne, and the more she humbles herself, the more God stoops down to her, pursuing her with his graces and accompanying her at every moment with his omnipotence. Such a soul is most deeply united with God. O oh, humility, strike deep roots in my whole being. O oh, virgin most pure, but also most humble, help me to attain deep humility. Now I understand why there are so few saints. It is because so few souls are deeply humble. Eternal love, depth of mercy, O triune holiness, yet one God, whose bosom is full of love for all, as a good father, you scorn no one. O love of God, living fountain, pour yourself out upon us, your unworthy creatures. May our misery not hold back the torrents of your love, for indeed there is no limit to your mercy. Jesus, I have noticed that you seem to be less concerned with me. Yes, my child, I am replacing myself with your spiritual director, Father Andras. He is taking care of you according to my will. Respect his every word as my own. He is the veil behind which I am hiding. Your director and I are one. His words are my words. When I make the way of the cross... I am deeply moved at the twelfth station. Here I reflect on the omnipotence of God's mercy which passed through the heart of Jesus. In this open wound of the heart of Jesus, I enclose all poor humans and those individuals whom I love as often as I make the way of the cross. From that fount of mercy issued the two rays, that is, the blood and the water. With the immensity of their grace, they flood the whole world. When one is ill and weak, one must constantly make efforts to measure up to what others are doing as a matter of course. But even those matter-of-course things cannot always be managed. Nevertheless, thank you, Jesus, for everything, because it is not the greatness of the works, but the greatness of the effort that will be rewarded. What is done out of love is not small. O oh, my Jesus, for your eyes see everything. I do not know why I feel so terribly unwell in the morning. I have to muster all my strength to get out of bed, sometimes even to the point of heroism. The thought of Holy Communion gives me back a little more strength, and so the day starts with a struggle and ends with a struggle. When I go to take my rest, I feel like a soldier returning from the battlefield. You alone, my Lord and Master, know what this day has contained. Meditation During meditation, the sister on the kneeler next to mine keeps coughing and clearing her throat. 
sometimes without a break. It occurred to me once that I might take another place for the time of the meditation because Mass had already been offered. But then I thought that if I did change my place, the sister would notice this and might feel hurt that I had moved away from her. So I decided to continue in prayer in my usual place and to offer this act of patience to God. Toward the end of the meditation, my soul was flooded with God's consolation, and this to the limit of what my heart could bear. And the Lord gave me to know that if I had moved away from that sister, I would have moved away also from those graces that flowed into my soul. St. Faustina writes a beautiful ode here to the virtue of humility. She, she says humility is like a beautiful flower, but she says there are not more saints in the world because so few of us excel in humility. We should always pray for this grace. She writes an ode to the eternal love that comes from God. And then Faustina asks Jesus if he is less concerned for her he tells her that he works through her spiritual director, Father Andrash. When Father Sopochko and Father Andrash are present, Jesus doesn't have to direct her directly. He can work through them. Faustina writes of being moved by the twelfth station of the cross. Uh, the twelfth station is, of course, Jesus dying on the cross. And so she meditates on the heart of Jesus, which is pierced, and the blood and the water that comes forth from his heart. She entrusts people to Jesus' heart as she prays this devotion. Faustina writes of having to make special efforts, even to do everyday things, when one is ill and weak. Even everyday things become difficult. But she thanks Jesus for everything, and she says that what matters is not the results but the effort offered. Uh, just getting out of bed is a struggle for her, but the thought of being able to receive Holy Communion gives her strength and something to shoot for. Um, Saint Jesus alone knows all that she had to endure in a given day, and it's the same with each of us. And so um, everyone has their struggles, and we should ask Jesus to give us the strength to keep making that effort. Faustina writes of enduring uh, a sister near her in the chapel who is constantly coughing and clearing her throat. And St. Faustina offered up the annoyance, and she didn't move her place so as not to make the sister feel bad. And then Jesus rewarded her with special graces, which she would have missed out on if she had moved. So those sacrifices that, they make, that we make are very important. <laughs> 